students welcome to today's class uh, in this class we are going to discuss about the uh, topic rigid rotator so we have already seen topics related to energy like uh, potential step problem the barrier penetration problem and the tunnel effect how these particles can tunnel through the barrier now uh, a continuation of that we have seen as linear harmonic oscillator where we have seen the energy values or energy levels permitted energy levels as en is equal to n plus half h nu so from this we are moving on to the topic called rigid rotator so here we are going to consider two masses connected by a rigid rod which is massless now these particles are assumed to be in rotation so about the axis around c the ma masses are considered to be rotating so this forms a dumbbell shape so dumbbell shape you know uh, we use in uh, exercise rooms or uh, places where we are doing some exercise so in that case it will be a two lobes connected by a rod so that shape is called dumbbell so here we are going to consider a rod which is massless so the contribution due to the rod will be not considered so in that case we are going to get a center of mass c along with that axis the two particular masses are going to rotate so we have moment of inertia concept coming to picture so we have i is equal to m1 r square plus m2 r square uh, r2 square because we have two masses and the distance we have we can see that it is r1 and r2 so also we have to uh, Consider the relations m1 r1 is equal to m2 r2 and r1 plus r2 is equal to r. So if we have a moment of inertia concept we have these relations then i becomes mu r square finally because mu is nothing but reduced mass of the system which is m1 m2 by m1 plus m2. If we take only two masses this will be the relation which is equivalent mass or reduced mass of the system. So it is nothing but two masses replaced by a reduced mass mu at a distance r from the axis of rotation it is like a equivalent mass now we have to consider that it is fully in rotation so that potential energy is zero so in that case we have to consider only the kinetic energy so here the massless rod does not uh, change its length so there will be no change in the our uh, masses uh, distance so in that case there will be no potential energy coming into picture so in that way we have only kinetic energy of rotation so now if we consider a simple rigid rotator the angular momentum then uh, can be given as p is equal to i omega so i is moment of inertia omega is uniform speed of rotation so here uniform angular speed of rotation then the total energy of the rigid rotator is given by potential energy plus kinetic energy in that way already we have told that uh, potential energy is zero in that way kinetic energy is described then i uh, e is equal to half i omega square so when we have moment of inertia concept i omega square i is moment of inertia omega is uniform angular speed of rotation once we know this relation the angular momentum should be an integral multiple of h so this is the requirement according to quantum mechanics so p is equal to i omega should be k h cross so k is nothing but an integer so p is equal to i omega then becomes k h cross so in, if we consider e when we cross that to uh, quantum mechanics then e becomes e of k because purely kinetic energy equal to half i omega square so this half i omega square can be replaced with k h cross that is what we have done here so what they have uh, then is omega is equal to k h cross by i so that they have substituted here so k square h square by i square will come so i i gets cancelled so what will you get is k square h square by 2i with this relation we are not satisfied because k square is not matching with experimental data so we have to do some fine and uh, refinement of the equation so that what is the value of this k we have to find so further we are going to proceed so we are going to proceed to find the permitted energy levels of rigid rotator on the basis of wave mechanical theory 
like we have in a harmonic oscillator the relation is en is equal to n plus half h mu so similar relation is expected out of this equation for this particular quantum mechanical concept so e is equal to k square h cross square by 2 i we need to find a more delicate relation that is why we call it as permitted energy levels so for that we need a Schrodinger equation in spherical polar coordinates already we know a Schrodinger equation in general format now we have to convert that spherical polar coordinates which is dependent on r theta and phi three different coordinates in that case what we are going to do is the relation is like this 1 by r square dou by dou r r square dou psi by dou r this is the first term dependent on r second term is dependent on theta so that is 1 by r square 1 by sin theta dou by dou theta sin theta dou psi by dou theta this is second term dependent on theta then third term is dependent on phi so 1 by r square sin square theta dou square psi by dou psi square plus general term 2 nu by h cross square e minus v into psi is equal to 0 so this is the general format of Schrodinger equation in spherical polar coordinates once we know this we are going to substitute the conditions we know for this rigid rotator as r is constant we can consider r equal to b1 also we know that potential energy is 0 also mu is replaced by i we know that mu is equal to m1 plus m1 m2 by m1 plus m2 so that is reduced mass so mu is replaced by moment of inertia of the system so when we consider all these systems uh, conditions we get 1 by r square because dou by dou r so it is referred to a constant so this full first term is vanishing so 1 by r square dou by dou r r square dou psi by dou r which is respect to a constant is equal to 0 differentiation so in that way first term is vanishing we have remaining terms in that 1 by r square is equal to 1 so 1 by sin theta dou by dou theta sin theta dou, uh, dou psi by dou theta similarly 1 by r square sin square theta r square becomes 1 so 1 by sin square theta dou psi square by sorry dou square psi by dou phi square plus 2i by h cross square e psi is equal to 0 so this is the first equation here e minus v v becomes 0 so we consider e psi is equal to 0 now we have to consider a solution for this equation for that we have already uh, removed uh, one term that is r theta phi there are three terms which is dependent the psi is dependent on r theta phi in that we have removed the first, the first term called r so now psi is dependent only on theta and phi so we are going to form two wave functions psi 1 psi 2 psi 1 is dependent on theta psi 2 is dependent on phi in that case we are going to get the equation is converted to 1 by sin theta dou by dou theta sin theta instead of psi i am going to write psi 1 psi 2 S similarly 1 plus sin square instead of dou square psi i am going to write dou square psi 1 psi 2 so this is our next equation and instead of psi here i will write psi 1 psi 2 so this equation reduced equation is converted to an equation consisting of psi 1 and psi 2 two different terms once we have got that since we know that psi 1 is dependent on theta psi 2 is independent of theta so we will take psi 2 out so it becomes psi 2 phi psi 2 which is dependent on phi divided by sin theta dou by dou theta sin theta dou psi 1 by dou theta similarly in the second term dou square by dou phi which is dependent on psi 2 so psi 1 is independent so we are going to take out so psi 1 theta divided by sin square theta dou square psi 2 psi by dou psi square plus 2i by h cross square this term there is no change so e psi 1 psi 2 so that is done we are going to multiply with this equation sin square theta by psi 1 psi theta here if i get sin square theta divided by psi 1 psi 2 psi 2 gets cancelled sin and sin gets cancelled so remaining we have remaining we have seen here sin theta by psi 1 so in this equation i am going to multiply by sin square theta by psi 1 psi 2 
So in that case, sine sine get cancelled. We are going to get sine two sine two getting cancelled. So we'll have sine theta by theta one. So there is no change in the remaining part. And here you will get multiply when you multiply by sine square theta by sine one sine two. Sine square sine square is cancelled. Sine one or sine one sine one is cancelled. So you will get. 1 by psi 2 multiplied by d square psi 2 by d phi square. So this term we are getting like this. The second term is converted like this, and remaining term because we are uh, dividing by psi 1 psi 2 psi 1 psi 2 is vanished. When you are multiplying by sine square theta, we have 2 i e by h cross k sine square theta. So the second term that is dependent on phi, I am taking it to right hand side. So that we have left hand side fully dependent on theta, right hand side fully dependent on phi. Here the second term is not dependent on any psi term. That is psi one and psi two. So it is a general term. Now I am going to reduce this equation so that I can solve this equation. For that I am going to take one by psi two d square by psi two d phi square equal to minus m square. So the full term I am going to take it as minus m square. So that minus m square when I multiply it by psi two it becomes minus m square psi two. I'm going to bring that term to the left hand side. So the full equation is d square psi two by d phi square plus m square psi two is equal to zero. When you have this equation, the solution is like this. Already we have uh, known it is a simple equation. So psi two is equal to exponential of plus or minus i m phi a constant multiplied by the Variable. So here it is plus or minus i i m phi. This equation psi two. This is the solution. Now what we have done is this minus full term we have equated to m square. So if I write m square minus m square here, it becomes plus m square. The full equation is transformed like this because if I take this full equation as minus m square, if you substitute it here, it becomes plus m square. So the equation is converted like this. So this m square I can bring it to the left hand side. To this equation, if you multiply by psi by sine theta, that is psi one by sine theta, I have to eliminate this particular ratio. For that, I am multiplying by psi one by sine square theta. So you will get an equation like this, where one by sine theta d by d theta sine theta d psi one by d theta plus two i e by h cross square. Because sine square is cancelled, it is gone. So m square by sine square theta whole multiplied by psi one is equal to zero. So we have to find the solution for this. You can see that we have eliminated r initially. Then we have eliminated from the psi one and psi two. We have eliminated psi two by substituting m square. So till now we have reached the situation. Now in this particular equation again for the reduction and getting the solution. We are going to multiply 2 i e by h cross square. Sorry, we are going to take 2 i e by h cross square is equal to c. So the equation further reduces like this, where 2 i e by h cross square is replaced by c. So once that is done, the solution for this equation can be obtained by taking cos theta is equal to here cos theta is equal to x. So if you take sine theta, it is one minus x square. So that is what we have substituted, and we have reduced this equation to d by dx one minus x square d psi by psi one by dx plus c minus m square by one minus x square into psi one is equal to zero. So this is what we have reduced this equation. So we have started with a very complex equation. We have reduced until this part where psi one only dependent on theta. We have derived a solution. So that theta also we have converted to x, and we have this equation. So this particular equation is called Legendre's equation. Equation is called Legendre equation, and the particular solution for psi one is obtained like one minus x square power m by two p of x. So p is called as Legendre's function. So Legendre's equation can now be uh, converted into like this, where 1 minus x square d square p by dx square. So how we are getting this particular equation? We are going to substitute psi one 
into this particular equation where d psi 1 will be replaced by 1 minus x square power m by 2 p minus x. So if we have that uh, equation we are going to convert like this. So we are not getting into the details of the steps we are going to uh, concentrate on the answer or the solution. So in this particular equation is obtained. So the Legendre equation what we have obtained is converted to this format 1 minus x square d square p by dx square minus 2x m plus 1 dp by dx plus c minus m minus m square into p is equal to 0. So this is the equation. Now we are going to express p in terms of power series in terms of px so that it will give a proper solution. So p is equal to minus infinity plus infinity a of p x power p. So this is the expansion of p as a power series in x. So if you consider this expansion into the previous equation that is Legendre's equation is converted we will get summation of p into p minus 1 a p p x power p minus 2 summation p into p minus 1 plus 2 into m plus 1 into p minus c minus m minus m m square whole multiplied by a of p x power p is equal to 0. So this equation we are going to get a solution when we have a recursive relation that is c is equal to if you are going to substitute p plus m p plus m plus 1. If you are considering c to be p plus m multiplied by p plus m plus 1 we will get a solution for this. So once we consider this condition we are going to consider k is equal to p plus m so k into k plus 1. So c becomes k into k plus 1. Already we know that c is 2ie by h cross square when we equate these two you will get the value of e, e is equal to k into k plus 1 h cross square by 2i. This is what I told you already previously we have uh, received the relation as e is equal to k square h square by 2i. So this is a very crude method or crude uh, relation. We want a specific relation out of this. So that is what we have achieved now that is e is equal to k into k plus 1 instead of k square we have obtained k into k plus 1 multiplied by h cross square by 2i this is what we call it as equation for allowed energy levels of a rigid rotated having a free axis in that case k is count rotational quantum number so this quantum mechanics can be related to spectroscopy we, where we have rotational energy in that this particular number is having a very big impact. So experimentally we can find few information that can be uh, correlated with the theoretical one. For that this particular relation plays an important role that is E is equal to K into K plus 1 H cross square by 2i is the equation for allowed energy levels of a rigid rotated having a free axis in that particular equation k is nothing but rotational quantum number so it is given a particular value where k is equal to p plus m where p is nothing but the function a Legendre function which can be expanded in the power series so all these steps we have skipped and finally we have found the answer so this experimental and theoretical correlation can be found for finding the rigid rotator energy. Thank you for listening to the class.